What's up guys? Today we have an Ares Defense MCR belt fed mission configurable rifle. We'll be doing a field strip on it today. First thing you want to ensure that the weapon is unsafe, which it is. You want to ensure to check feed tray cover. You lift vertically, lift the feed tray. If not, charge to the rear already. Flip the charging handle down and you're going to want to go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear with the bolt catch. The weapon is clear. We'll take the magazine out, 200 round box, it comes standard for M249s, remove any ammunition belt from the feed tray as well, if not done so already. When this weapon ships, you'll get a, an instructional brochure as well as a technical manual for disassembling the weapon, and it'll have malfunctions and troubleshooting procedures in here, so refer to that. If you guys are having any issues with your MCR. So now that we've done that, first thing we can do is remove the barrel. There is a quick release, QD release button here. You're going to depress it just like a stoner 63 push. And the barrel should spring forward. Gets removed like so. Next what we'll do is move the bolt forward. So charge it back. Don't just hit the bolt release. That could cause damage to the moving parts. Charge it back and ride it forward. Okay. Flip it back up, and now we're going to separate the weapon into two components, upper and lower receiver, just like a standard M4, M16, AR-15. Pull the QD pin, and fore and aft, your takedown pins, pivot pin, okay. And you can take your magazine, your belt box adapter out, set that to the side. Okay, we'll set our... Lower receiver to the side after we remove the buffer and buffer spring. The buffer and buffer spring are a little bit different than a standard M4. A little bit longer than your standard carbine. And it is, uh, it's lodged in there, but there is a carbine stock spacer in there as well. So it actually has a shim in the rear, which it will get very dirty and it would require the use of a dental pick in order to remove. So we won't take that out of the buffer tube, but there is a shim in there as directed by the manual there. So now that we've done that, we tip the weapon forward. We'll rotate our feed tray cover up once again as it's fallen. Okay, we're gonna charge slowly the bolt. We're gonna move it to the rear. Okay, and now we're gonna impact this area back here. The charging handle has a takedown notch in the side of the receiver in order to remove it from the receiver of the weapon. And there's a spring-loaded cam, so what we want to do is push on that cam as we're pulling to the rear. And then we can remove our bolt carrier, so it's going to stop after we've depressed our cam roller and pulled it all the way to the back. Now what we need to do is rotate it 90 degrees, and we can take our carrier out of the weapon. So it pretty much takes down as any standard uh, M4, M16 bolt carrier group with a... Uh, slight difference and what we'll need to do you can use the tip of a cartridge as I'll do this right here to get the firing pin retaining pin out as it is pretty hefty it's a pretty stout little cotter pin so pretty standard just like any other M4 M16 firing pin retaining pin you take that out you'll keep pressure down on the cam roller. It is not a bolt cam pin, but it's a cam roller retaining pin, which also retains the firing pin retaining pin. So what you have to do is lift vertically, and then it will fall to the rear. So press down in order to get the bolt to clear to the rear. Pull the cam out, and your firing pin depresses out like so. You can take your bolt cam pin out then, and it is a uh, slightly different than a regular M16 or M4 bolt cam pin and then you can remove your bolt which is also different than a standard M4 or M16 so there's that and then we can disassemble our extractor so just like any M4 or M16 you take the tip of the firing pin and you press the extractor retaining pin it's actually kind of finicky to get out because it is shouldered on each side. It is not a bad idea to use a clamp in this instance. But anyway, you get the idea. 
There we go. Okay, so we take our extractor out, which is pretty standard, and it has this little D ring, O ring on it, as well as your standard extractor spring inside. And then our ejector pretty much is pinned in the same way as a standard M4 M16 bolt. And it would be a good idea to get the ejector bolt or ejector disassembly tool to depress the ejector before you would unpin that. But it's not required or necessary for field stripping. Okay, and then we'll do our feed tray cover. If all you have is your firing pin or the use of a cartridge, just be very careful. We don't want to cause damage to the firing pin. You can uh, push with a little bit of force to start your retaining pin for your feed tray cover, pull it, and it has a takedown notch in it, and remove your feed tray cover like so, and your feed tray. And after doing that, your Ares or Fight Light MCR Mission Configurable Rifle is field stripped for cleaning and inspection. Reassembly goes the same way, so we'll drop our feed tray in. Put our feed tray cover in the slot, and you can actually lock it into position if you want to. Push the takedown pin. Now your feed tray cover and your feed tray is retained into position. We'll put our extractor back in our bolt. So we have the extractor there and the extractor retaining pin here. Put it back like so. And it's important to note that you want to set your bolt carrier with this notch which is actually the tappet for the gas piston interface you want to set that where it's on the left if you have this parallel to the marching surface and then you're going to take your extractor and you want it going facing to the right of that index your hole for your bolt cam pin so we'll take the cam pin we'll install it in the bolt like so and it's important to note the cam pin you want to index the hole or parallel to the bolt carrier so that we can get our firing pin in there and subsequently our uh, cam roller as well so we'll go ahead and put that in like such and then we'll drop our cam roller in from the top let our bolt freely fall like so so it stays in position and then we'll put our cam roller in like such now this is omnidirectional, so there you notice there is a small roll pin there in order to retain the cam roller. I usually install that and keep that toward the rear of the carrier, but you could put it in either way. It's not going to matter. And then you put your firing pin retaining pin, which is also retains the cam roller as well. So it's not going anywhere as long as your firing pin retaining pin. You do uh, an inspection and PMCS of the bolt. Make sure that the cam is actually is normal. And that your extractor is facing toward the right of the carrier. Now to reinstall in the receiver, we'll rotate our feed tray cover as well as our feed tray vertically. We'll put this in and how you have to start this is you rotate the tab up for the tap and the gas piston vertically. And then once we get it in, the takedown disassembly notch for that will rotate at 90 degrees once again. And then we'll push down on our cam roller to get it back into position. Then our carrier will go forward. We'll close our feed tray and feed tray cover just like so. We can rotate it back. And we will then take our charging handle and we'll index the charging lever takedown notch so that the tappet for the gas piston is properly aligned with this. And now we can reinstall it. So I'm just taking this while the carrier is in the rear position and dropping this in the position of that recess. Similar to an RPD, if you will, some other systems. We'll push it all the way forward like so. Okay, and now we can put our upper and lower receiver back together. So this is equipped with a Fostec Echo Trigger. This is just a semi-auto gun. So in order to reassemble it, we have to keep slight tension on semi-automatic for the echo position. We'll push our takedown pin and pivot pin in the disengage position. Okay, now we got our front 
pivot. And then now we will put our buffer and buffer spring back in and we have the shim installed in the buffer tube. Push it in like so. And then pushing down the hammer for it on the timing lock. We will then index so we can reinstall the upper and the lower. Sometimes this can be a challenge. If it does not work in semi, you can try it in echo mode. Usually it does work in echo mode. Okay. We are reinstalled. Now we're going to charge the weapon back to the rear. Lock the bolt open. Then we can reinstall our barrel. It just goes in like such. And the barrel won't lock in unless you depress the button slightly until it will push back further. And then it will just lock into place with a little bit of shaking of the barrel itself. And then we'll put our belt box adapter in. Then you can install your magazine of 200 rounds. forward so we're not going to actually load it. Put your starter tab in, M27 linked, M855 ammunition, and you can charge it and you're good to go, or in the case if your bolt carrier is locked to the rear, you strip around and uh, you're ready to fire. So that is the mission configurable rifle field stripping.